What's up everybody, my name is Alka, bringing you another video for the Astralis R6 channel. In today's video, I'm going to go over the 5 attacker operator gadgets that you're using wrong. Let's just get straight into the video. Coming into my number 5 spot is going to be Gridlock. Gridlock is not really seen as that good of an operator, especially because there are people that do her job but better. No Madden Zero. But, like, she's not very good, right? That's what most people think. But if you think that she's just a worse version of Nomad and Zero, you're not playing her correctly. She's not meant to be a flank watch operator. And if you try to use her for flank watch, typically the flankers are just going to have a suppressed weapon, shoot your gridlock tracks, and then you're going to get flanked anyways. And it's not going to work out well for you. But if you use gridlock to lock the grid of the site to where people can't rotate through the site so that you can get plants down easier, then it's good, right? Now, people don't like gridlock a lot, especially even now because the meta is not very plant friendly. You can't get plants down much anymore these days days because of how fast paced the meta is right now uh, so that's another reason why she's not too looked up upon in terms of how she does in the current meta but if you play her correctly she can still be a force to be reckoned with if your team is playing with you and playing at the pace that you're trying to go at so you use her gridlock tracks again like i said to make it harder for the people in sight to rotate through the site to deny your plant a great example of a good map for gridlock is cafe if you're playing gridlock and you go into cafe and you tracks off freezer you tracks off the double door you tracks off heaven and you make it very very hard for them to rotate to you as you're smoke planting, you can actually get some very good value out of Gridlock. Something that you might also not know is Gridlock's utility is very, very versatile. She has three secondary guns, two of which are a Gon 6 and a Super Shorty for a lot of destruction, and then she also brings EMP grenades, smoke grenades, or breach charges. So there's a lot of versatility with her loadout in terms of destructibility and what you can do with certain loadouts that you want to bring with what site you're pushing, yada yada yada, whatever it might be. But there's just a lot that you can do with her at any given time, especially with those EMP grenades. Now you can get walls open with her and make planting a lot easier to do with her. Uh, so she's kind of just a utility powerhouse in terms of how you play her. Is she favored by the meta? Not really at all. But if you start using her tracks in sight to help you lock down the site so you can plant, uh, she can actually get a lot more value than if you're just using her for flanks, and that is why you're using her gadget specifically wrong. Coming into my number four spot though is going to be Ying. Now Ying is actually quite good in this meta, being that it's so fast paced and being that her gun is very easy to control. She's actually pretty good in this meta. Now how can someone possibly use Ying wrong? It's just flash grenades, right? Well, people in general use flash grenades wrong, right? So something that you can start doing is Ying is using every single Ying Candela as a way to push somebody. So people will use Ying, they'll throw a flash in and they'll try to kill somebody that's blinded, right? That does work and that is how most people win using her, but there's a smarter way that you can go about using Ying that you probably haven't even thought about. If you use Ying to start pushes like you would use Lion, for example, then you can get more value out of her with your team than you would just going in by yourself. So I'll give you another example example. If you go on to bank and you're ying and you're trying to push into janitor so that you can go into the rotate in the site and plant, what you can do is be like, hey team, I'm going to flash in janitor so I can take janitor control and then I'm going to help the people who have gotten the wall open pinch the site and we can get the bomb down. So really good example, right? You flash in janitor, you take the space because you know the defender's just going to run away, right? He's not going to try to take a gunfight with you, he's blind. So you use him running away to take the room that he was just in, right? You use her flashes to take control of rooms. So if you flash in and you know a defender's there and you know they're going to run away and you're not going to get a kill, you might as well take the space that they had beforehand so that you can keep taking space and keep pushing off of her flash grenades to get easy control on the map to be able to help execute better. You can also use her flashes for cover. Like I said, if you have a guy trying to get the bomb down in bank, you can flash in through the rotate from janitor so you know that they're not going to push your guy planting and you can use them as cover, right? So you don't necessarily need to be using her flash grenades just to get kills. You can use them to take and maintain space on the map for your teammates or even just for yourself and get a lot more value out of her. Not to mention also, you can actually put these ying candelas through surfaces. So if you put them through soft walls, if you put them through barricades, soft hatches, whatever it may be, you can actually deploy these gadgets on surfaces and have the flash grenades appear out the other side. So great example, if you're playing vertical on the site that needs to be played vertical, you can flash the floor beneath you and make it to where people who are pushing site can take space of the site without having to worry about defenders that can see and shoot them. And then you can also use it for free kills. If you're doing it on a barricaded door, you can put a ying on a barricaded door, open the door once it's been yinged and walk in instead of having to just ying through the door and risk exposing yourself when you throw that candela. So there's a lot of versatile ways that you can use her and you can use her a lot smarter than you just normally would. And overall, she's just kind of a misused operator. Coming into my number three spot is going to be Zero. Now Zero is actually a very, very good solo queue operator in my opinion. Not only are his guns pretty easy, 
easy to use and his utility pretty easy to get value out of, but he has a very high skill ceiling in terms of what you can do with his cameras. The primary use of how people use zero cams, especially in lower elo, is they try to shoot zero cams on or near the wall that they need to get open and zap the bandits or mutes or kades for that matter that are on the wall to help their hard breacher get the wall open. Now, if you wanted to do that, you could play somebody with EMPs like Osa, Gridlock, Lion, Knock, Sledge, whatever it may be. You can play anybody with EMP grenades and get that job done better and more reliably than you would with Zero. The reason that it's more reliable to use EMP grenades is because with Zero, you shoot his cams in sight, there's bound to be a defender that just shoots your cam and you get no value out of it. So something that you should start doing with Zero is use his cameras for flank watch. Using his cameras, just shoot a camera behind where you and your team are pushing, and then if one of your teammates dies or you or your teammates aren't doing anything, one of you can just hop on the cams and watch the flank and you can get an easy kill. One thing that's cool about Zero cams is they're very hidden, they're very tiny, and they're not very visible. So being able to use them for flanks when defenders don't see the cam is very powerful. There are certain maps where this style of play for zero does shine more than others. Maps like Chalet, maps like Bank, and maps like Theme Park where there's a lot of open space and a lot of places where you can actually hide these zero cams to get the most effective out of the flank watch play style for him. A route that I typically run if I'm pushing Chalet is I'll use my regular drone to clear out library, I'll get in gunfights, whatever it may be. Then I hop into library, I shoot a zero cam into lobby to be able to watch Mez and Fireplace, and then I shoot a zero cam on my blue flank so that both of my flanks are covered in case one of my teammates dies and they wanna watch the cameras, but also I can use a taser on my cameras to be able to zap the default cams or any proximity alarms or electronic gadgets that might be there. And then I still have two cameras left that can help get the wall if we need that. I also have cameras that I can shoot into the site where I know defenders won't be able to go, or I can use these cameras to shoot through soft walls to be able to get information on two different rooms that are near me to further help information on the site. That's another cool thing about Zero, right? His cameras can go through walls, so you can watch one room completely, and then if you want to watch the flank in another room, you just press spacebar and it flips it to where you can watch the other room. This is a very, very useful thing. And if you don't know and you want to be able to tell which wall the Zero cams can go through on his crosshair, if there's a little top bar on his crosshair that's showing, then you know you can shoot it through the soft wall and be able to turn your camera. If there isn't, then you know you're hitting a hard wall. Another pretty useful tip there. But like I said, if you're using him for information and for flank watch and you're not trying to use him for his taser, that is how you need to be playing zero. And that's how most people aren't actually playing zero, especially in the mid to low elo. Before I continue the video, I just want to say it has been a rough couple of fucking weeks uh, for ranked. So <laughs> I could not find any OSA footage in like the three days that I had to record this video. Also, I got a new PC, so all of my footage that I did have for all of the operators is completely gone because I couldn't transfer any of the data. Um, so <laughs> enjoy the background footage. Coming into my number two spot is going to be Osa. Now, Osa is pretty misused, and I'll tell you why. Most people use her like a shield operator. They push in with her shield, and a lot of times it just doesn't work because people shoot you in the feet, they shoot you in the shoulder, they nitro you, they throw impacts at you, right? And there is a way to negate this. The way you're supposed to play Osa correctly, especially for this meta, considering she has EMP grenades, is you have your EMP grenades help your Thermite or your Ace get the wall open, and as or before he gets the wall open for that matter, you put your shields down like deployable shields and you just play behind them. So using Osa as makeshift deployable shields for attack is a lot better than trying to play her as a shield operator like Monty or like Blitz. And there's a huge difference between the two, and I'll show you why. So if I get a certain wall open, let's say it's the CC wall for Clubhouse, and they have an Osa sitting there, it makes it a lot harder for defenders to be able to peek the breach, and it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to see inside and for us to take gunfights. So you want to be using Osa shields like you would use deployable shields on defense. Deployable shields on defense, you put them in very high traffic attacker areas where you know the attackers are going to have to funnel in so that you can slow down that attacker rush and you can make it better for you to have easier gunfights and to get information on them, whereas they don't have information on you. It's a very, very powerful tool and being able to have clear ones and not even one of them, but two of them on attack with very good weapons and EMP grenades is a very powerful thing. So if you use them like deployable shields and you put them in very high traffic areas like walls that need to be breached or where you know your teammates are going to have to push into defenders, it can turn the tides of who's going to win what gunfight for attackers in your favor if you use her shields correctly. So my tip for Osa is stop using her as a shield operator and start using her like she has deployable shields in her pocket. And then coming into my number one one spot for the most misused operator in Siege on attack is going to be Lion. Now, on the surface level, Lion is probably one of the easiest operators to get value out of, all you have to do is click a button at random times and you're bound to either get pings or you're bound to not get pings 
and you know that somebody's sitting still somewhere and you pre-fire him, right? Very, very, very simple to use. Now, playing him this way is not necessarily wrong. If you play Lion and you just click his button randomly three times in a round, like I said, you're going to get some, even if it's slight, inherent value out of him. But he has an enormous skill ceiling, especially because of the secondary utility that he now provides. And something that you need to realize is the better you get at Lion, the easier it is to just rack in wins on attack. And I'll tell you how you can play him at an advanced level right now. With Lion, like I said with Ying, you want to be using his utility to take control of parts of the map, whether it be roam clear or pushing site. As Lion, what you need to realize is getting pings on people is cool because it gives you information, right? But having no pings on somebody if you already know where they are is even more powerful and I'll tell you why. So let's say you're rogue playing a random map and you drone somebody, right? And if you drone them, what are they going to do? They're probably going to shoot your drone and they're going to move, right? But if you Lion scan, what are they going to do? They're going to sit still, right? So what you can do is you drone out all of the enemies, you drone out all this space, and then you Lion scan once you see somebody or once the entire floor is clear. So you take all that space for free. Now, if you do see someone on your drone, you scan, they're sitting still, and you know where they are because you just droned them and you get an easy pre-fire kill because you have information on them and you're able to take all this space without them taking it back. The reason they can't take it back, again, is because they're in the middle of lion scan. They're gonna sit still. And if they do try to take it back or they do try to move, you have pings on them and you can easily see where they're going. Right, so not only using his lion scans to be able to actually get information on people, but using his lion scans to help get kills and to help roam clear on people that you already have information on is one huge thing. Another way that you can play lion is for sight, right? So I talked about roam clearing and how you can use it for that. Now I'm talking about how you can use him to push sight. With Ying, it's a lot easier because you just throw a flash grenade in and you're able to make it to where defenders leave so you take control, right? But with Lion, it's a little bit more finicky, but still pretty simple, and I'll explain it to you. With Lion, what you want to do is when you want to push the site, the second that you see your teammates moving, or the second you start moving, that's when you scan. So what you do is you drone the site, you see where they are, and you, you see the general area of where they're sitting and what they're holding. Once you do that, you Lion scan to make sure none of them move, and then you go in and you just have your crosshair where you think they're going to be, and you get easy pre-fire kills. Or what you can do is you Lion scan, you see where they are, you have information, on them and then you get your teammates to set up crossfires in case they try to push you and you just plant right and while the lion scans going down you just plant and once the bomb is down then you still have lion scans right so if they tr if they try to come like kill you and they try to come defuse which they have to do then you can just lion scan and because they have so little time to kill you and defuse they're just gonna run through the lion scan right they're not gonna sit and wait for the lion scan to be over and waste time they're just gonna run through it and at that point you get free pings on them, which is free kills, right? So either way that you can think about using lion scans at such a high level and in such an advanced way that it's kind of a disservice playing him just scanning at random points, right? You'll still get some value out of him even if you just scan at random points, but you can play him at such a high skill ceiling that you never even thought about playing before. If you don't know also, we have a lion guide on this channel if you wanna see more of what we're talking about. So make sure you go down below and click that. If you wanna see more of me. I have my own channel. It's linked in the description. My name is Alka and I will see you in the next video.